Hey, Shalom family, most high Christ bless. Gotta get started in just a second. Is another minute. All right, Israel. All right, Israel, we're going to go ahead and get started. So today we're going to deal with um, the 144,000, all right? Who are the 144,000? Now, the 144,000 is not just some, some, some mystical uh, number. It's not just some mystical group of men that are going to appear out of thin air. It's not just, it's not some... Mystery man is going to pop out of um, osmosis when the Most High God, his son Christ, cracked the sky. That's not who the 144,000 are. The 144,000 are real men of the Lord who you can see on the streets, not just on social media, not just clicking and typing, but you can see them in the trenches. The 144,000 men are men who are grinding to bring forth Christ's kingdom, who are busy and addicted in the work. And they got a lot of other qualities. We're going to deal with those qualities right now so we can identify. Um, who the 144,000 are, all right? Let's open up Revelation 14. Revelation 14, we'll start at verse 1. Let's go into the scriptures and get some clues and see who they are, all right? If anybody who is able to scrap can scrap, I appreciate it. Revelation 14, let's start at verse 1. The book of Revelation, chapter 14, verse 1. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the mount, on the Mount Zion, mm -hmm. and with him a hundred Forty and four thousand mm -hmm. having his father's name written in their foreheads mm -hmm. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters mm -hmm. and as the voice of a great thunder mm -hmm. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps mm -hmm. Verse three and they sung as it were a new song mm -hmm. before the throne and before the four beasts mm -hmm. and the elders and no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and 4, so you see that the 144,000 are not just any regular Israelite man. They're not your average Israelite man. Nobody, nobody in, in Israel who's going to be a part of the 144,000 is going to be an average person. The 144,000 are not men of mediocrity. They are not mediocre men at all. They are elite men who are going to have elite privileges, who are going to know things that others do not even know, according to the verse. Come on. Which were redeemed from the earth they were what redeemed from the earth read these are they which were not defiled with women read again these are they which were not defiled with women the first thing the scripture said is these are they which were not defiled with women many times in this truth we look the israelite man who's waking up in his last days um what's going to separate him what's going to separate the average mediocre man of israel from the 144,000 men of israel the 144,000 men of Israel will not be defiled with women. He won't be pushing the doctrine of multiple wives or multiple whores, however you would like to call it. The 144,000 men will not be defiled with women. Let's look at ways that 
our fathers over the time have been defiled with women. Let's get um let's get to Rock 25. It says these are they that were not defiled with women. Let's get to Rock 25. And read verse 24. The book of Sirach, chapter 25, verse 24. Mm -hmm. Of the woman came the beginning of sin, mm -hmm. and through her we all die. So it says, of the woman came the beginning of sin, and through her we all die. So what happened back when Adam, uh, the first marriage, Adam and Eve, what happened? Adam was defiled by his wife. Adam was defiled on why? Because he followed his wife, which was contrary to the one true God. A lot of brothers, y'all weakness is y'all wife. Why? Because you were not correct. Adam's job was to correct his wife. The Bible says there's a certain spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth him understanding. The woman does not have the same spirit that the man has, but it is our job to correct that sin, not abiding, not partaking that same sin. Our job is to correct that sin in hopes that our wife will follow our righteous example. But the Bible says that what? Oh, the woman came to the beginning of sin, and through her we all die. Why is that? Because unlike the 144,000, Adam actually did what? Adam followed the, the ways of his wife, which defiled him. And now what? Set the course of all these generations on fire. And now what? We have to, we have to earn something that was given to us by the Most High God in the beginning. From there, give me um, first Edges 4. First Edges 4. Says 144,000 will not be defiled with women. First Ezra 4, read 26. The book of First Ezra, chapter 4, verse 26. Mm -hmm. Yea, many there be. What did it say? Yea, many there be. It says, many there be, come on. That have run out of their wits for women. Many men, many Israelite men have run out of their wits for women. Your wife not repenting, you not repenting. Your wife don't want to come to the Sabbath, you ain't coming to the Sabbath. Your wife emotional, you were your wife's emotions. Read again. Yea, many there be that have run out of their wits for women. Many there be who have lost their last mind for women. Come on. And become servants for their sake. It says, and become servants for their sake. Meaning what? Whatever your wife's influence is over you is stronger than God's influence over you. You have run out of your wits for her sake. Come on. Many also have perished. Have what? Have perished. Read on. Have erred Read. and sinned for women. You see that? So that's going to separate the average Israelite man from what? The 144,000 premier elite men that's going to be the government when the Lord God returns and sets up his kingdom. So one of the main things that I said was these are they that are not defiled women. Let's look, let's look at some of the great ones because you might be thinking, oh, that ain't going to be me. Well, I advise you to stay girded up because let's examine one of the great ones. Let's get Sirach 47. Let's examine one of the great ones. Sirach 47, let's start at verse 13. Because you may be thinking, well, I never. Okay. Sirach 47, let's start at 13. The book of Sirach, chapter 47, verse 13. Mm -hmm. Solomon reigned in a peaceful time uh -huh. and was honored, for God made all quiet round about him. It says Solomon reigned in a peaceful time. God made all quiet, I meaning Solomon was not at war during his kingship. He was not even at war. David had subdued all his enemies before he even reigned. Come on. That he might build a house in his name mm -hmm. and prepare his sanctuary forever. Right. So now, jump over. Give me verse 19. So we're dealing with Solomon. Let's examine um, what the verse says about Solomon. Read verse 19. Verse 19. Mm -hmm. Thou didst bow thy loins unto women. What did it say? Thou didst bow thy loins unto women. It says, Thou didst bow thy, bow thy loins unto women. Read on. And by thy body, by thy body, by your lust. Read on. Thou was brought into subjection. He was brought into subjection. He did what? He was defiled by his heathen wives during his lifetime. And that's why he, he told you in Ecclesiastes that what? He gave his mind to know wisdom and folly. Why? Because he was defiled for a time with his heathen wives. They took him off the mission. Come on. Thou didst stain thy honor. It says thou didst what? Stain thy honor. Come on. And pollute thy seed, mm -hmm. so that thou broughtest wrath upon thy children, uh -huh. and was grieved for thy father. Read. So the kingdom was divided. Says, so the kingdom was divided. Why? Why was the kingdom divided? Why? Because Solomon had what many strange wives and followed their gods earnestly. Had Israel building temples and everything. So it says, so the kingdom was what? Divided. The kingdom was divided. Why? Because one man was defiled with women. Come on. And out of Ephraim ruled a rebellious kingdom. And guess what? Northern kingdom 
from their first king went right off into idolatry. They were no longer under the hedge of Judah. And they immediately went into idolatry. Why? Because one man was defiled with women. Got the kingdom split and northern kingdom with their first king went off right into idolatry. From there, let's get Ahab. Give me uh give me first kings. Ahab was defiled with women. These same spirits that we're reading about, these same spirits are here today. First Kings 21, start verse 4. First Kings chapter 21 and verse 4. Mm -hmm. And Ahab came into his house uh -huh. heavy and displeased. Read it again. And Ahab came into his house mm. heavy and displeased. It says, Ahab came home heavy and displeased. Ahab was an emotional brother. He wore his emotions on his sleeve. He held on to everything. Read it again. And Ahab came into his house uh -huh. heavy and displeased. He was heavy and displeased. He was what they call today, he was in his feelings. He was in his emotions. He was so far deep into his own head um, that uh, he was able to be influenced by his wife. Read the verse again. And hey, Ahab came into his house mm -hmm. heavy and displeased. Emotional, brother. Come on. Because of the word which Naboth, the Jezreelite, had spoken to him. He was heavy and displeased over words that was spoken. Now, I was read that. Did I hear that verse right? And, read that again. And Ahab came into his house uh -huh. heavy and displeased. He was heavy and displeased. He was all in his feelings. Come on. Because of the word which Naboth, the Jezreelite, had spoken to him. Read. But he, he had said, mm -hmm. I will not give thee the inheritance of my fathers. Mm -hmm. And he laid him down upon his bed mm -hmm. and turned away his face and would eat no bread. This man laid down, put his face in the pillow and his face the wall. He turned away his face and would eat no bread. Emotional brother. Emotional weak man. That's what a lot of you are. Emotional and weak. And y'all going to compromise the mission to the most like God kills you and moves you out the way. And either way, that's good for you. Y'all gonna compromise the mission. Start at four again. Verse four, and Ahab came into his house uh -huh. heavy and displeased. Ahab came into his house heavy and displeased. These are not the characteristics of the 144,000, being emotional and all in your feelings when somebody speaks to you a certain way. It says he came into his house heavy and displeased, why? Because of the word uh -huh. which the both the Jezreelite had spoken to him. Because he heard something he didn't wanna hear. Something that rubs him the wrong way. Now he's emotional. What did he do now? Come on. But he has said, I will not give thee the inheritance of my fathers. Right. He got told no. Saying no is godly. Come on. And he laid him down upon his bed. And he laid him down like a child. Come on. And turned away his face. And he faced the wall like a child who's on punishment. Come on. And would eat no bread. And now he don't got no appetite. This is an emotional brother. Come on. But Jezebel, mm -hmm. his wife, came to him mm -hmm. and said unto him, what? Why is thy spirit so sad? So now the wife has to what? Restore a man into the spirit back of a God. The wife sees that, that he that he's in his feelings, and now she comes into what to do what? Restore him back to his rightful place. Come on. That thou eatest no bread. She's like, why, why are you starving yourself? Come on. And he said unto her, mm -hmm. because I spake unto Naboth, mm -hmm. the Jezreelite. I talk, I talked to the brother, come on. And said unto him, mm -hmm. Give me thy vineyard for money, mm -hmm. or else. If it please thee, mm -hmm. I will give thee another vineyard for it. And he answered, mm -hmm. I will not give thee my vineyard. So, so the brother's heavy and displeased. He's in his feelings because he didn't have it his way. Because he can't have things his way. He's in his feelings. That's a lot of you men. And then he come, he come in a woman now. Come on. And Jezebel, his wife, said unto him, mm -hmm. Do thou know? Do thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? Don't you govern the kingdom of Israel? Ain't you an officer? Ain't you a soldier? Can't you just use your position to get what you want? Since you can't get what you want, you in here, your, your emotions and your feelings. Can't you just use your position to get what you want? Come on. Arise mm -hmm. and eat bread, bread and let thine heart be merry. Mm -hmm. I will give thee the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite. Uh -huh. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name uh -huh. and sealed them with his seal. So how was he defiled? He was defiled by his own emotions and then what? He let his wife, what, rule through him. He let his wife make decisions through him. This is another way of being defiled with women. Letting your wife use your rank, you are defiled with women. That is not a characteristic of the 144,000 brothers whatsoever. Read that part again. 
So she wrote letters in Ahab's name and sealed them with his seal and sent the letters unto the elders and to the noble and to the nobles that were in the city in his city dwelling with Nabal. And she wrote in the letter saying, Proclaim a fast. You said she said what? Proclaim a fast. She pretends to be holy. She pretends to be holy. She says, Proclaim a fast. We need to fast. As if she's a spiritual woman. Come on. And set Naboth on high among the people. Mm -hmm. And set two men, sons of Belial, mm -hmm. before him to bear witness against him. You see, you see how wicked this is? And Ahab knows everything that's happening. But a lot of you brothers see the evil in your own wife and y'all won't correct it. Guess what? The scripture said, just man fall of seven times. What do you think that means for the wife? It means exactly what it means for you. The difference is the 144,000, they're going to correct their wives. They're going to correct their wives and move on. Why? Because your wife is your first student. So this ain't saying you give up on your wife. You correct her and you continue to what? Build her up. She's your first student. She should have what? Undivided attention. And then you got to make sure that you maintain the course of the mission. But what did Ahab do? Ahab let his wife stir him up. Re, re, jump to verse 25. Verse verse 25. Come on. But there was none like unto Ahab. There was what? None like unto Ahab. There was none like unto Ahab, this weak brother, come on. Which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, mm -hmm. whom Jezebel, his wife, stirred up. She did what? Whom Jezebel, his wife, stirred up. It says his wife would stir him up. Let's get the definition of stir. I got it right here. Give me definition three. It says, there was none like Ahab whom Jezebel, his wife, stirred up. You got it? Defin uh, stir. Definition two. Mm. Yeah, you, you, you know. Move or cause to move slightly. Right, it's another one. Let me click right here. Yes, sir. And give me... Read that one and then read the synonyms. Stir, mm -hmm. begin or cause to begin to be active or to develop. Read the next one right here, number three. Arouse strong feeling in someone. What does it mean to stir? Arouse strong feeling in someone. A lot of you brothers that let your wives arouse strong feelings in you, and they're not of the Lord. They're not of the Lord at all. Read it again. Arouse strong feeling in someone. It says, a lot of you brothers let your wives arouse strong feelings in you that were not there before that are not of God, that are not of this Bible, that are not of IUIC leadership. And then you walk around with your wife's emotions and you say things that your wife has said to you at home around the men of the Lord. And you think we don't know that your wife is talking. You might as well just put a wig on, brother. Read that again. Arouse strong feeling in someone. Uh -huh. Move or excite. Move or excite. Y'all let your wives move you. Y'all let your wives sway you. Y'all let your wives excite you, manipulate you. That is not a characteristic of the 144,000 for you men who roll like that. Give me some synonyms now. Synonyms. Mm -hmm. Arouse. Mm -hmm. Rouse. Kindle. Mm -hmm. Inspire. Mm -hmm. Stimulate. Mm -hmm. Excite. Mm -hmm. Awaken. Mm -hmm. Waken. Quicken. Animate. Mm -hmm. Activate. You said what? Activate. A lot of you brothers let your wives activate that old man. That old man who was idle in you. And it's a good thing that the old man was idle. But y'all do it. Y'all let y'all wives activate that old man. And you start acting like the, the niggerous woman that she is. No, read 25 again. Verse 25. Mm -hmm. But there was none like unto Ahab, mm -hmm. which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, mm -hmm. whom Jezebel, his wife, stirred up. So that he, he was able to be stirred up with his wife, meaning what? He was defiled with women. He is not fit to be part of That spirit is not of the 144,000. It wasn't then, and, and the most I said with that spirit back, it won't be ever. The 144,000 are built different. They are built, manufactured, and packaged different. For example, let's get Sirach. They live by a whole different code. Sirach 33. Start at verse 19. The book of, Go ahead. The book of Sirach, chapter 33, verse 19. Mm -hmm. Give not thy son. Give not who? Give not thy son, give not thy son and wife, give not thy wife, read thy brother and friend mm -hmm. power over thee. It says, Don't give your wife power over you, read 
while thou livest. No, no, no. While you at the school. While thou livest. No, while you at home when nobody's around. While thou livest. It says, don't give your wife power over thee while you alive. Why? Because she's the weaker vessel. Your job is to watch for a soul. You had your protection. Read that verse again. So, Rock chapter 33, verse 19. Mm -hmm. Give not thy son and wife, thy brother and friend, mm -hmm. power over thee. Do not give your wife power over you. Read. While thou livest, while you alive, while you have air in your breath, Israelite man, the hundred forty-four thousand not built that way to understand that thing. That thing is embedded in the DNA. We're not giving a woman power over us while we alive. Some of you brothers are defiled with women and are easily stirred up, aroused, old man activated. Why? Because your woman got an attitude. She got cut during class. She got offended two weeks ago and she's still holding on to it. She got offended two years ago. She's still holding on to it. Matter of fact, you holding on to it. You remember everything that happened to you since you've been in the congregation. Days, days of atonement done past, Sabbath done past. We done fast together. But you, you remember every, every ill thing that happened to you. That's because you're the devil the Bible speaks of. You have the devil on you. And while you got air in your lungs, you can repent. But you are, you are unprofitable to the mission while you're in that state. Unprofitable because you are all in your emotions. You are stirred up and you walk around heavy like Ahab. You are Ahab brother. From now, let's get Genesis 18. Why did the most I got deal with Abraham? The mighty Abraham. Why did he deal with him? Let's see. Is it because Sarah was able to stir him up? Is it because he was weak and emotional? Is it because he was in a pattern to see why his wife drove? His wife got the stick. He in a passenger seat. Genesis 18, instead of verse 19. The book of Genesis, chapter 18, verse 19. Mm -hmm. For I know him that he will command his children. Why did Mosaic want to deal with Abraham? For, uh, for start at 18. Verse 18. Mm -hmm. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation. It says Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation. Come on. And all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Mm -hmm. For I know him that he will command his children mm -hmm. and his household mm -hmm. after him. God says, I know that spirit right there. And that spirit will, con uh, will say it again. That he will command. He, he will suggest. He will command. No, no, no. He, he going to tell them this is what you should do. He will command. He going to command who? His children mm -hmm. and his household. Everybody under his roof is going to be commanded. Does this mean everybody in your household going to be perfect? No, but you're going to command them. And when you see them going contrary to what this word says, you got to what? You got to stand firm, stand stiff, and deal with it nose to nose. That's what men and the Lord do. Men and the Lord don't act like problems don't exist. Men of the Lord deal with problems. And men of the Lord understand that problems will occur. You want to know why we know that? Because we read this Bible. We know what happened in Corinth. We know what happened in Galatia. We know what happened in Ephesus. But those of you who don't study, you are weak and you are emotional because you don't know what's going on around you. And you take everything so deep. Why? Because you understand these things are all part of the walk. With much suffering and tribulation shall we enter to the kingdom. But you weak and emotional brothers don't know that. You yellow make me sad, brothers. I need a nap, brothers. Why is your countenance so heavy, brothers? Wife stirred you up, brothers. Wife using you to run a, to run a school with a congregation, brothers. Your, your wife hatching ideas through you. Ventriloquist wives that y'all have. Y'all got ventriloquist wives. Read that verse again. Why the most I got deal with the mighty Abraham? Read 19. Verse 19. Mm -hmm. For I know him mm -hmm. that he will command his children mm -hmm. and his household after him. God dealt with Abraham for a different reason. The spirit of Abraham is the 144,000 spirit. If you want to know what are the qualities and characteristics of the 144,000 man so I can align myself with that frequency, you have to examine the mighty Abraham where the covenant began. He commanded his house and his children. From there, let's get uh, Micah. Abraham ruled over his household. He ruled his wife. He ruled his children. He came home. He even, he even circumcised his servants. Oh, what a day that was. Imagine you you one of Abraham's servants. And uh, Abraham come back like, yeah, uh, hey, everybody getting it today. Everybody getting circumcised. Everybody getting what? what? What is circumcision? Can you imagine that? But that, that's the kind of spirit that the 144,000 will have by any means necessary. Whether you understand or not, you got to get with the program. Micah 7 and verse 5. The book of Micah chapter 7 and verse 5. Mm -hmm. Trust ye not in a friend. Uh -huh. Put ye not confidence in a God. Read. 
Keep the doors of thy mouth. The scripture said, keep the doors of your mouth. Come on. From her. From who? From her. From her. Come on. That lieth in thy bosom. Your wife is on a need to know basis. For example, men, men, we are more susceptible to certain sins. For example, men typically, what are men involved in? Men are usually involved in fornication and adultery. They are very, very prominent in Israel. I'm not speaking nothing y'all don't already understand. The wise that has an ear, they don't already understand what I mean. Typically, it's those things. Typically, men deal with pride, uh, vainglory, fornication, adultery, pornography, lust, and, lust of the eyes. Those are, those are very, very common in Israel. Those things shock no one when a man falls to those things. Well, as well, he gets himself back up and maintains the cause and the mission after he repents. But what do, what do women primarily deal with? They run their mouths. They talk too much. They tell things they ought not. They rehearse matters. They murmur. Sometimes they, they, they even tell things that are not even true in the first place. They tell lies. They gossip. Women are more susceptible to those things because what do women do back in the world? They sat around and talked about everybody's business all day. They, they saw no evil in it. So what do you think Satan is going to influence you to do while you're in this truth? He's going to trick you with the same things that you did back in the world. Okay, you smoke crack back in the world? What do you think Satan is going to tempt you with from time to time in this truth? You think he's going to tempt you with weed? No, he gonna, you, you, weed was not your vice. Crack cocaine was your vice. Cocaine is a hell of a drug. So he's going to bring those things to you that you indulged in back in the world. Makes sense, don't it? So likewise, the Bible says keep the doors of your mouth from her that lies in your bosom. Why? Because what is she susceptible to do? Take that information and, and, and insert it in places that it ought not be. What is she going to do? She's going to take the information. She's going to rehearse the information. She's going to retell the information. She might even add to it, exaggerate the information. Now, not only is she rehearsing the matter, she's also lying on top of that. So that's why the Bible told you to do what? Read five again. Verse five. Mm -hmm. Trust ye not in a friend, mm -hmm. put ye not confidence in a God. Read. Keep the doors of thy mouth. Keep the doors of your mouth. Read. From her that lieth in thy bosom. From her that lieth in thy bosom. That, that means no pillow talking. Oh, yeah, I was at school. I just, I don't, I'm just low in the spirit. I don't know. I talked to the officer, and he said this, that, and the third. I was talking to the soldier. He said this, that. That's none of your wife's business because all you're doing is putting your weak spirit upon her, and she's going to have an a, a, a indignation for those inside the congregation. Now, now you, you two are um, the schism couple who, who have secret animosity for everybody around y'all. Meanwhile, y'all don't see y'all own transgressions and shortcomings. Isn't, isn't that funny? Y'all don't see anything that y'all do is out of order. Y'all don't see all y'all fall uh, uh, shortcomings and every way you fall short, but you see it upon everybody else. That's the holier than thou spirit. Oh, I just can't take it. I just can't. I can't believe that they're sending about it. I can't believe that these things are happening. Did, did what happened get corrected? Well, well, yeah, well, yeah, it got corrected. I just don't understand why these things are happening. You do realize the Bible is a true book, and Christ said that we are sick. You do realize that we was whole, we wouldn't need Christ. Christ said they that are whole need not a physician. But they that are sick, he says, I then come to call the righteous, meaning those who don't see their own sin. Christ is not Christ is not calling you. If you don't see your own shortcomings, if you don't see your own um, places where you fall short, Christ is not calling you. Christ says, I came not to call the righteous, meaning the righteous, because you're not really righteous. You're just too prideful. You're just too arrogant. You're just too simple to not see your own sin. But you are uncomfortable with everybody else's sin. That is not a spirit of 144,000. 144,000, for example, like Paul. Paul understood what? Paul dealt with various churches. And Paul understood that what? No matter what is wrong with the church, we got to do one thing, fix it. The most High God dealt with seven churches in Revelations. He praised them. He also told them what they need to do what? Fix. <clears throat> one thing the most High God did not do was condemn any church in Revelations. But you guys don't even read Revelations. But then you but, but, but then you simple spirits come to the congregation. You say, well, I just can't believe this is going on. And then this happened. And you, and you, and you download and record every single thing that ever happened, but you can't remember not one precept. You weak, devilish brothers. That's who you are. You weak, devilish sisters who, who, who stir up these men. Now, read that verse again, verse 5. Verse 5. Trust ye not in a friend, put ye not confidence in a God. Mm -hmm. Keep the doors of thy mouth mm -hmm. from her that lieth in thy bosom. So it says, keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. So from there, give me um, give me First Peter 3 and 6. Wives are on a need-to-know basis. And the spiritual man understand that. Spiritual man is not going to have a, um, a serious conversation that deals with the men of the Lord in a vehicle with his wife. A spiritual man is not going to take the conversation that, that took place with men of the Lord and go back home and pillow talk with his wife. But a lot of you brothers do that. A lot of you brothers are weak and sensual. Ahab brothers. First Peter 3 and 6. First Peter chapter 3, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham. What did it say? 
even as Sarah obeyed Abraham. It says Sarah obeyed Abraham, read. Calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as, as long as you do well and are not afraid with any amazement. So it says that even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, meaning what? He was the ruler of the household. Abraham was the ruler of the household. Abraham did not study with Sarah. Abraham taught Sarah. Why? Because he was the ruler of the household and that was his place. You understand? Read six again. Verse six. Mm -hmm. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, mm -hmm. calling him Lord, Read. whose daughters ye are, mm -hmm. as long as ye do well, Read. and are not afraid with any amazement. You see that thing? It says, and they are not afraid with any amazement. Give me Timothy 3 now. Timothy 3, start at verse 4. First Timothy chapter 3 and verse 4. Mm -hmm. One that ruleth well his own house. Where so you have to be? One that ruleth well his own house. One that ruleth well his own house, come on. Having his children in subjection with all gravity. So the 144,000 understand what? The importance of what? The order with their wife and the order with their children. It says one that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection. Why? Because the children are a reflection. Same so when a wife is a reflection, the same way what? The father is supposed to what? encompass all those things, and that's the spirit that was in Abraham. And that's why God dealt with Abraham. Read that verse again. One that ruleth well his own house, mm -hmm. having his children in subjection mm -hmm. with all gravity. You see that? So you cannot be weak at home. You cannot be weak with your wife. You cannot be weak with your children. And then you, you want to come, you want to position yourself as a mighty man of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. In the midst of the prophets, you cannot do that. You have to be well-rounded. You have to what cover every avenue. You cannot have children who 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 are, who are disobedient and rebellious. But then you want to come to the congregation. You want to lead men, but you you cannot lead those who came from your loins. That is out of order. That is not the spirit in the hundred forty-four thousand. Read six again. Verse six. Mm -hmm. Verse four. Mm -hmm. One that ruleth his own house, mm -hmm. having his children in subjection with all gravity so now some of them might say well what about the mary brothers okay let's deal with the mary brothers let's get thessalonians thessalonians 4. thessalonians 4 start at verse 1. the book of thessalonians chapter 4 verse 1. Mm. furthermore then we beseech you brethren mm. and exhort you by the lord jesus mm. that as ye have received of us mm. how ye ought to walk mm. and to please god so you would abound more and more. It says, furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us, how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. Read on. For ye know what commandments we gave you mm -hmm. by the Lord Jesus. Read. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, mm -hmm. that ye should abstain from fornication. You brothers who are unmarried, you should abstain from fornication. The work in which you have been taught, you should abound in it more and more. Not become stagnant, not become bitter, not become idle. You're supposed to abound more and more. Come on. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel. It says, you single unmarried brothers, you should learn how to possess your vessel. You should learn how to possess your vessel. Come on. In sanctification and honor. And what? In sanctification and honor. So what does that mean for you? Learn how to possess your vessel in sanctification and honor. So what does that mean? What is what is the spirit like upon you as you deal with the congregation? Let's get to Rock Four. So Rock Four. And start at verse 10. The book of Sirach, chapter 4, verse 10. Mm -hmm. Be as a father unto the fatherless. You're supposed to do what? Be as a father unto the fatherless. Read. And instead of a husband unto their mother, mm -hmm. so shall thou. So shall thou be as the son of the most high. So you should be doing what? You should be being a father to the fathers. You should be what? Grooming up the young men. You may not have children, but you should, you should be doing what? Grooming the children in the congregation. Make sure they're sharp in precepts. Make sure they're in order. Watching over them. Make sure they are dealing with each other what? In correspondence with God's laws, statutes, and commandments. Being a father to the fatherless. You, you have a lot of single women in the congregation who don't have um, their father uh, in the truth with them. So guess what your job is to do? Your job is to fill the void with all sanctification and honor. 
meaning you're not doing it with any ulterior motives. You're doing it with all sanctification and honor, as we read in Thessalonians. Read 10 again. Verse 10. Mm -hmm. He is a father unto the fatherless, mm -hmm. and instead of an husband unto the mother. It says, and instead of a husband unto the mother. Meaning what? That sister in the congregation is supposed to be treated what? Anything that she may have need, our job is to fulfill the need. Meaning what? No ulterior motives. All with sanctification and honor. That's what it means to be a father to the fatherless. Come on. So shalt thou be as the son of the most high, uh -huh. and he shall and he shall love thee more than thy mother doeth. He, and the most high God shall love you more than your own mother doeth. First Peter 2. First Peter 2. These are the attributes that men have to apply. These things are not common. These things are not uh, average or mediocre. The 144,000 spirit is not average or mediocre. First Peter 2 and verse 15. First Peter chapter 2, verse 15. Mm -hmm. For so is the will of God, that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. You see that? It says with well-doing we should do what? Put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. Mm -hmm. Read again. For so is the will of God, that with well-doing mm -hmm. ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. So, what, so the 144,000 understand that it's the most high above all. The Most High God in our nation is above all things. Anybody who thinks that their woman is the number one priority, if anyone believes their lust is the number one priority, you are defiled. You are defiled. And, then, and while that's air in your lungs, you can fix that. But you must first acknowledge the fact that you are defiled. If your woman is stirring you up, if she has preeminence over you, if you are pillow talking and telling her things that she ought not, forgetting that she's on a need to know basis, she is not a part of God's army. She can support the troops, but she is not a part of God's army. From that, let's go, let's, let's go back to Revelation 14. Yes. And start at verse uh, 4 again. The book of Revelation, chapter 14, verse 4. Mm -hmm. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. Mm -hmm. These are they which follow the Lamb, whithersoever he goeth. Mm -hmm. These were redeemed from among men. So it says, these are they which were not defiled with women. It says, for they are virgins. So what is that going into? It says, they are virgins. What is that part going into? So we dealt with, they are not defiled with women. But now the verse says, the 144,000, they are virgins. So what are they talking about? That's 2 Corinthians 11 and verse 2. What is that going into? The book of Second Corinthians, chapter eleven and verse two. Mm -hmm. For I am jealous mm -hmm. over you with godly jealous. Mm -hmm. For have I have espoused you to one husband. The Bible says that we are espoused to one husband. Come on. That I may present you as a chaste virgin. As a what? As a chaste virgin to Christ. So what is this virgin in Revelation 14? It's talking about what? Being pure in the spirit. It says being a chaste virgin unto Christ. It's a spiritual virgin. I mean, what we are not defiled with what we're not defiled with different doctrines we are not devoured we are not defiled with egyptology we are not polluted with uh white christ jesus which is fiction we're not defiled with those things we are virgin we are not tossed to and fro with every one of doctrine to be defiled therewith that's what it's talking about the 144,000 are not trying to eat chicken on the passover they are not saying the sabbath stars at sunrise they are not defiled they are what they are unto christ as a pure chaste virgin we do the same things that christ did Christ ate no chicken on the Passover. Therefore, we would not eat chicken on the Passover. Christ kept the Sabbath from evening to evening. Guess what we're going to do? We'll keep the Sabbath from evening to evening because Christ is what? The Lord of the Sabbath. From now, let's get um, Jeremiah 3. Because it said they are virgins. I'm, I'm going to show you um, the spirit that's on a lot of Israel. Jeremiah 3, start at verse 1. See what the Most High said. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 3, and verse 1. Mm -hmm. They say, if a man put away his wife, mm. and she go from him, and become another man, mm. shall he return unto her? Shall not that land be greatly polluted? Mm. But thou hast played the heart with many lovers, mm. yet return again to me, mm. saith the Lord. Great. Lift up thine eyes unto the high places. Do what? Lift up thy eyes unto the high places. The high places are places that Israel will go to worship things that were other than the Most High. So the Most High said, lift up your eyes to the high places, come on. And see 
where thou has not been lying with. You said, see what thou has not been lying with. I mean, we have lied with many different doctrines. We have worshiped many other things that are contrary to what this Bible says. That's what it means to be um, um, a whore, a spiritual whore, to deal with these other philosophies and deal with these other gods. But the 144,000, they are, they are presented as virgins, meaning what? Not defile the ways of this world. They are not defiled with Egyptology, Krishna, fat man Buddha, a guy who can't even control his diet. What a joke. The 144,000 will not be defiled with those things. They will be what? They will be steadfast. They will follow Christ. For example, give me um, give me um, Psalms 19, verse 8. Because the word virgin also goes into what? Purity. They are pure. So how does one become pure? Let's see. Let's get Psalms 19. Let's read verse 8. The book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 8. Mm. The statue of the Lord are right. It says the statues of the Lord are right. Come on. Rejoicing the heart. It says the statue of the Lord are right. Rejoicing the heart. Come on. The commandment of the Lord is pure. It says the what? The commandment of the Lord is pure. It says the commandments of the Lord are pure. So those, those who defile in these different doctrines by the cunning ways of man, those who defile all these different ideologies and different idol worship and worshiping gods, they are not virgins. They would not be in the number of the 144,000. Because you have to be what you have to be steadfast and um, presented to Christ as a chaste virgin. I mean, we follow Christ and the Messiah only. And remember, the word virgin goes into purity. So it just said the commandments are pure. So you, you cannot say you're part of 144,000, but you believe we don't have to keep God's laws. That's, a, that's another doctrine of Israel, that we don't have to keep God's laws. Okay, just understand you won't be in the number and you won't be in the kingdom. From now, let's get um, um, John 10. Because it says um, they are virgins and they follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth. John 10, start of verse 4. The book of John, chapter 10, verse 4. Mm. And when he put forth his own sheep, mm. he goeth before them, mm -hmm. and the sheep follow him. The sheep follow who? And the sheep follow him. Come on. For they know his voice. Read. And a stranger would they not follow. You see that? It says a stranger they would not follow. Somebody teaching contrary to what is written in his Bible, it says the 144,000, they're not going to follow him. Those who are predestined, they're not gonna follow that. Come on. And the strange and the stranger will they not follow, mm -hmm. but will flee from him. They would do what? Flee from him. You see, when somebody tells you you eat chicken on Passover, you're supposed to flee from them. When somebody tells you the Sabbath starts at sunrise, you're supposed to flee from them, not become friends with them, not share their videos. You're supposed to flee from them. Why? Because they are leading you to destruction. They are teaching you things contrary to what is written in this Bible. You read Genesis 1 and 5, plain as day, the evening and the morning with the first day. But, you, but somebody come with a different doctrine, you say, okay, I guess I'll follow you. That spirit is, is not of the true men of the Lord. Read 5 again. Verse 5. Mm. And a stranger will they not follow, mm. but will flee from him, mm. for they know not the voice of strangers. You said they know not the voice of strangers. Go back to Revelation 14. Yeah. Started back off at four. The book of Revelation, chapter 14, verse 4. Mm -hmm. These are they which were not defiled with women, mm -hmm. for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb, whithersoever he goeth. Mm -hmm. These were redeemed from among men, mm -hmm. being the first fruits unto God mm -hmm. and to the Lamb. You see that being the first fruits of God and unto the Lamb. So the Bible says, These are they that which were redeemed from among men. So this ain't for all men. These were they which were redeemed from among men. Read that part again. These, these are they which follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth. Mm -hmm. These were redeemed from among men. So, that, so this is not all men. This is not all inclusive. This is exclusive. This is a particular breed. Uh, read on. Being the first fruits unto God mm -hmm. and to the lamb. Read. And in their mouth was found no guile, Read. for they are without fault before the throne of God. So it says, "In their mouth was found no guile, and they are at, they are, they are at, um, they are without fault before the throne of God." So how are you going to be found without fault before the throne of God? And what is the man whose mouth is found no guile? Let's get Romans three. Romans three, start at verse three. Romans chapter three, verse three. Mm -hmm. For what if some did not believe? It says, what if some did not believe? Come on. Should the unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Read. God forbid. Mm -hmm. Yea, 
let God be true. Let God be true. I mean, let this Bible be true. Come on. But every man a liar. But every man a liar. Liar goes into what? Guile. When you start speaking outside of this Bible, understand, you are not of the 144,000. That is not a characteristic. When you start coming out of your own mind and your own opinions and start prophesying out of your own lust, it says the 144,000 in their mouth is found no guile. But the Bible says every man is a liar. So, so what must you do? You must speak what? Read. That thou might. No, 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 go back. God forbid. Mm -hmm. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. Come on. As it is written. How must you teach? As it is written. How must you prophesy? As it is written. You must prophesy according to as it is written. Read on. That thou mightest be justified in thy sins. And you be justified. The word justified means to be made innocent. The word justified means to be without fault before the throne that we just read. So those men going to do what? They're going to study this Bible. And they're going to teach this Bible. They're going to use this Bible. Not their own cunning words. They're not going to make up stuff. They're not going to squeeze in things out of their own lust because they want to barbecue on Friday night. And they, and they, they want to be um, have a good conscience about it. So they create a new doctrine. They want to smoke weed in their own lust. So they create a new doctrine. They want to lay with multiple women. So they create a new doctrine. No. The 144,000, they will be found without God. I mean, they're going to use what this Bible says. They're not going to twist scripture. They're going to do what this Bible says, and they're going to apply the discipline thereof. Uh, read four again. Verse four. God forbid. Mm. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. Read. As it is written. You have to teach as it is written. Read. That thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, mm. and mightest overcome when thou art judged. Now, from now, let's get second Ezra. Second Ezra's two. And start at verse 38. The book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 2, verse 38. Mm -hmm. Arise up and stand. Mm -hmm. Behold, the number of those that be sealed in the feast of the Lord, mm -hmm. which are departed from the shadow of the world uh -huh. and have received glorious garments of the Lord. Just read that name from the top. Arise up and stand. Mm -hmm. Behold, the number of those that be sealed. That be what? That be sealed. That be sealed. So how do you become sealed? How, how are these men sealed? Let's get Isaiah 8. Isaiah 8 and verse 16. How does one become sealed? The book of Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 16. Mm -hmm. Bind up the testimony. Uh -huh. Seal the law. Mm -hmm. Among my disciples. So the testimony is referring to who? Jesus the Christ. It says, bind up the testimony and seal the law among my disciples. Those who are sealed will have what? Those two things coupled together. They will keep God's laws and the faith of Jesus the Christ. They don't reject Christ and say, I'm going to keep God's laws like Amalek does. That, that's a heathen custom. They don't say, I'm going to uh, believe in Christ and then break God's laws. That's what the Christian church does under Caesar Borgia. Both of those are ways of the heathen. But the 144,000, the men who are sealed, they believe in Christ and they keep the commandments. It must be those two things coupled together. Let's go back. The book of Second Ezra, mm. chapter 2, verse 38. Mm. Arise up and stand. Behold the number of those that be sealed in the feast of the Lord, mm. which are departed from the shadow of the world. Which are departed from what? The shadow of the world. So what is the shadow of the world? The shadow of the world is what? America's philosophies government voting politics sports all those things are the shadow of this world remember a soldier is not supposed to be entangled in those things so it says these men who are still they are departed from those things they don't spend any time learning every stat rebound assist lay up foul that's not they have better things to do like uplift the nation and get out of this captivity they are departed from the shadow of this world give Micah two and ten let's hold it up Let's hold that. Let's get Micah 2 and 10. What? The book of Micah, chapter 2, verse 10. Mm -hmm. Arise ye and depart, mm -hmm. for this is not your rest. So we have, we have to do it. We have to remove ourselves from the ways of the destroyed of our people. Remove ourselves from the ways of the destroyed of this world, the heathen of this world. It says arise and depart. It don't mean get you a plane ticket because nobody's going to escape the Lord's destruction. But it says, do what? Arise and depart, meaning what? Your mind should depart from the ways of America. Philosophies take place up here. Philosophies are learned right here. Philosophies rest 
right here in the bosom of fools. So it says what? Arise ye and depart. Mm -hmm. This is not your rest mm -hmm. because it is polluted. This land is what? It's polluted. This land, it has no light therein. It is polluted. It is a shadow. It has no light in this place. This land is not our kingdom. It is not our place of rest. It is polluted. Come on. It shall destroy you. It shall do what? It shall destroy you. It shall destroy you. Come on. Even with a sore destruction. It shall destroy you. It, if you, Sooner or later, if you, if you could let, let your time be consumed in sports, guess what? What the body does, what the mind does, it wants to continue to do. For example, it says an object in motion stays in motion. So when you addicted to the work of the Lord, when you addicted to the bringing forth of Christ's kingdom, what do you think you're going to keep doing? You're going to continue to do that. When you start teaching, you're going to want to continue to teach. You start keeping God's laws, you're going to continue to keep God's laws. The moment you draw back, and you start to consume your time doing things that are not profitable in the shadow of this world and the pollution of this world. Guess what? You got two sides. You got the spiritual man. You got the old man. One of them is being fed. He who, he who gets fed is he who gets stronger. Period. So guess what? Every time you watch sports, you, you, you just fed the old man. Every time you watch pornography, you just fed the old man. Every time you um ar around the wicked, you just fed the old man. That's why the Bible says observe the time because somebody is being fed in all occasions. That's why the Bible says what? Depart from the shadow of this world. Get uh, Second Timothy's. <clears throat> Let's drop that. Let's get Second Timothy's. Chapter two, and I start at verse three. The book of Second Timothy, chapter two, verse three. Mm -hmm. Thou therefore endure hardness mm -hmm. as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. It says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Come on. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. You see that it says, No man that warreth entangleth himself. What does it mean to be entangled? It means, it means to get yourself trapped. You entangle yourself. Nobody traps you. You trap yourself. When you keep listening to that old Beyonce album, you entry, you start to entrap yourself when you keep bumping that old Rihanna album, knowing she's uh, beyond ungodly, knowing she's doing what, putting waves of lust upon you with every track. But you keep on listening to it. You keep on watching them old television shows. You want to watch Power. You want to watch, what's the one with Sister in the White House? Scandal. Oh, yeah, Scandal, yeah. You want to continue to watch Scandal. You know, you want to watch why you got a lust for Edomites. So all these things is what? Entangling yourself. You entangling yourself. You are polluting yourself. But read that. Read through again. Verse 3. Mm. Thou therefore endure hardness mm. as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Mm. No man that war entangleth himself mm. with the affairs of this life. It says no man that war entangleth himself with the affairs of this life. Come on that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. Exactly. So now, now let's go back. Let's go back to Second Andrews. Let's go back. Go ahead. The book of Second Andrews, chapter 2, verse 38. Mm -hmm. Arise up and stand. Behold the number of those that be sealed in the feast of the Lord, mm -hmm. which are departed from the shadow of the world and have received glorious garments of the Lord. Mm -hmm. They have received what? Glorious garments of the Lord. It says they have received glorious garments of the Lord. What is these glorious garments going into? Let's hold that. Let's get Revelation 19. They have received glorious garments. Revelation 19. And I start at verse 8. The book of Revelation, chapter 19 and verse 8. Mm -hmm. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, mm -hmm. clean and white. Glorious garments. Come on. For the fine linen. For the what? For the fine linen, the fine linen, come on, is the righteousness of saints. So, again, there there will be nobody in the number of the one forty four who is not keeping God's commandments to the best of their ability, not overlooking, not omitting, not turning a blind eye, because it says the glorious garment, the fine linen is talking about the righteousness of the saints. That's what it's talking about. Um, from there, let's get um Second Edges two, and read the. Go ahead. Second Ezra chapter 2 and verse 40. Mm -hmm. Take thy number, O Zion, and shut up those of thine. Take thy number, O Zion, and shut up those of thine that are clothed in white, uh -huh. which have fulfilled the law of the Lord. Why? Because that, that, that fine white, that clothed in white is referring to what? The righteousness of the saints. They have fulfilled the law of the Lord. And I said, oh, no, we want to keep those laws. Oh, Christ, that's why I keep the laws. That's even in the Israelite community today. People are pushing the, the absence of God's laws because of Christ. 
when Christ said, think not till heaven and earth pass. Come on. Verse 41, mm -hmm. the number of thy children whom thou longest for is fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Beseech the power of the Lord, that thy people, which have been called from the beginning, may be hallowed. Mm -hmm. Verse 42, I, Ezra, saw upon the Mount Zion a great people whom I could not number, and they all praised the Lord with songs. Come on. Verse 43, and in the midst of them, there was a young man of a high stature, mm -hmm. taller than all the rest. Mm -hmm. And upon every one of their heads, he set crowns. Now, watch this. Jump down to verse 45. And let's get a more description about these men. Read that. Verse 45. Mm -hmm. He answered and said unto me, mm -hmm. these be they that have put off the mortal clothing. It says these be they have put off the mortal clothing. These be they that have put off the mortal clothing. Read on. And put on the immortal and they put on the immortal remember the mortal clothing is going to what sin lust carnality being sensual entangled in the ways of this world that's why uh it says shake off the weak nature it says these are they have put off the old clothing the mortal clothing and they are now what clothed in white meaning what the righteousness of god they spend their life trying to do their best to keep god's commandments um come on and have confessed the name of god mm -hmm. Now are they crowned mm. and received palms? Mm. Then said I unto the angel, mm. What young person is it that crowneth them mm. and giveth them palms in their hands? Mm. So he answered and said unto me, mm. It is the Son of God, mm. whom have whom they have confessed in the world. Great. Then began I greatly to commend them that stood so stiffly for the name of the Lord. Mm. You see, the hundred forty-four thousand are going to stand stiff. For the name of the Lord. In order to stand stiff, you have to get up off your behind and from the computer screen and go out there on the streets. You gotta say you stand stiff when your 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 only time of prophesying is behind a computer, is when you are typing, when you go in live. The hundred forty-four thousand, they are going to stand stiff in this world, out of the comfort of their house, off the couch. They're going to confess the name of the Lord, meaning what? In public, not behind closed doors. Not quiet, not 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 lighting a candle and putting it under a rock or under a bushel. They're going to be active, coming to a hood near you. That's the difference between the hundred forty-four thousand and a lot of these regular men who do nothing but talk. The most I God say actions are weighed. Bring forth your actions and let us weigh those things in the balance. And if you have no actions, you have nothing to talk about. Now, from that, give me um, give me um, Corinthians fifteen, because it says they stood so stiffly. Let's get Corinthians 15. Corinthians 15 and read verse 58. The book of Corinthians, chapter 15 and verse 58. Mm. Therefore, my beloved brethren, mm. be ye steadfast. Be ye what? Steadfast. Be ye steadfast. Come on. Unmovable. Unmovable. Remember, it said they stood stiff for the name of the Lord, they were not swayed to and fro. It wasn't looking back, envying the world, want to go back to their weed, want to go back to their whores, want to go back to whatever it was they indulged in. It says, those are those who stood stiffly. The Bible says, be what? Be, be ye steadfast. Be steadfast, come on. Unmovable. Be unmovable, come on. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Always abounding in the work of the Lord, not sitting back, running your mouth. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. We got to do more. Come on. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. You see that? So the 144,000, they are not relaxed. They serious. They dedicated. They hell bent on ushering in God's kingdom. From now, let's get Corinthians 16 and verse 15. The book of Corinthians chapter 16, verse, verse 15. Mm -hmm. I beseech you, brethren, mm -hmm. you know the house of Stephanus, mm -hmm. that it is the first fruits of Achaia. Read and that they have addicted themselves. They have what? Addicted themselves mm. to the ministry of the saints. That right there is an attribute of the 144,000. The 144,000 are not some imaginary men. They're going to be the men who have addicted themselves to the work of the Lord. One, one week they're in this country, prophesying, bringing forth the gospel. The next week they're in this country, prophesying, bringing forth the gospel. Next week they're in a different country. And every day they got boots on the ground. Every single day. Why is that? Because that's the spirit of the 144,000. They are not some fairy tale. They are not some men who are going to pop up out of osmosis. They are men who are here right now. And you would know them by their fruits. Christ says you would know them by their fruits. They would be those who have addicted themselves. 
not those who um who um who who are in this gospel for recreational purposes. Oh, I, oh, I teach every, every every so often. I might bring it out at Thanksgiving, because you brothers is lukewarm. You brothers have not yet addicted yourselves to the work of the Lord, but y'all be the ones who do the most talking. That's not of the hundred forty thousand. That's a characteristic of a woman. Read fifteen again. Verse fifteen. Mm -hmm. I beseech you, brother, mm. you know the house of Stephanus, mm. that it is the first fruit of Achaia, mm -hmm. and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. They have done what? Addicted themselves mm -hmm. to the ministry of the saints. You said that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. Man, what? They're about the Father's business. They're not about their own personal business. They don't have their own personal vendettas and objectives. They're about the Father's business. If it ain't about the Father's business, it ain't none of my business. From there, let's get Ecclesiastes 9 and 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 10. Ecclesiastes mm. chapter 9 and verse 10. Come on. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do. It says, whatever your hand I findeth to do. Right now, we all put our hands to the plow in his work. It says, whatsoever thy hand findeth to do. Come on. Do it with thy might. Do what? Do it with thy might it says do it with thy might meaning give it all you got leave it at, work with your whole soul for the most high teach with your whole soul you want a fire mission do it with everything you got you holding post that camp hold post with everything you got the teacher and reader should be fully protected it says do it with all thy might come on for there is no work mm -hmm. nor nor device mm -hmm. nor knowledge mm -hmm. nor wisdom in the grave mm -hmm. Whether thou goest. Because when you're dead and gone, there's nothing you can do. So the best thing you can do is work while you have air in your lungs. Best thing you can do is repent while you have air in your lungs. And work as hard as you can. Whatever you do, it says do it with all thy might. It's not talking about uh, cause contention with all your might. Because a lot of y'all good at that thing. It's not talking about gossip with all your might. It's not talking about being messy with all your might. It means what? Work and bring forth Christ's kingdom. Is what I'm doing bringing forth Christ's kingdom? Am I gathering or scattering? You only can do one of the two. You only can do one of the two. Am I gathering or am I scattering? From there. Give me uh, Luke now. The 144,000, they understand that Christ's kingdom comes by a multitude of labor. By a multitude of labor. That's what they understand. Let's get Luke. and Let's read 19. And let's read verse 11. The book of Luke, chapter Chapter 9, verse 19. Hold on a second. I want a second. Give me 9 and 19. You said 9 and 19? Yeah, you said 9, 19, and 11. No, hold on one second. Let me, let me get it. Let's get let's get Luke 19 verse 11. Okay. Mm -hmm. Luke chapter 19 and verse 11. So this is one of the Lord's parables. Come on. And as they heard these things, mm -hmm. he added and spake a parable mm -hmm. because he was nigh to Jerusalem mm -hmm. and because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. You see, you, you have many men who sit back and they think the kingdom is just gonna come, it's just gonna it's just gonna appear. But the 144,000, they understand the kingdom will only appear through a multitude of business, hard labor. And they understand that they must get involved because if not you, then who? That's the mentality of the 144,000. If not me, then who? As a matter of fact, why even ask questions? Get out there in the field. Get out there in the vineyard. The harvest is plenteous. That's the mindset of those who are ready to rule this earth. But you have certain people who think, oh, it's just going to appear. I continue to do things that are unprofitable. I continue to do things that are detriment. I continue to scatter. I continue to cause confusion. And I think that it's going to appear. No, you're actually pushing it back. And it's a judgment for that. Read 11 again. Verse 11. Mm -hmm. And as they heard these things, mm -hmm. he added and spake a parable mm -hmm. because he was nigh to Jerusalem mm -hmm. and because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. Mm -hmm. Verse 12. Uh -huh. He said, therefore, mm -hmm. a certain noble went into a far country. So the noble is referring to what? Jesus the Christ. It says, a certain noble went into a far country. Come on. A certain noble man went into a far country to, to receive for himself a kingdom mm -hmm. 
and to return. That's the Messiah. He rose. He's at the right hand of the Father, and he's going to return. Come on. And he called his ten servants mm -hmm. and delivered them ten pounds mm -hmm. and said unto them, Occupy till I come. You know what? We're supposed to use the talents that God gave us until Christ returns. We're supposed to be working till he comes. Occupy until he comes. Occupy is a verb. Occupy is a verb. Read that part again. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds mm -hmm. and said unto them, mm -hmm. Occupy till I come. Mm -hmm. But his citizens hated him. So it says, he told them, Occupy. So, so what are we supposed to be doing? Jeremiah 7, verse 25. He gave, he put talents in each of the men. He says, Occupy till I come. So what are they supposed to be doing? Jeremiah 7 and verse 25. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 7, verse 25. Mm. Since the day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt, unto this day, mm. I have even sent unto you all my servants, the prophets, uh -huh. daily rising up, mm. early and sending them. Mm. Verse 26. So it says, he sent us the prophets daily, rising early and sending them. What would we do? What would the prophets do when the Most High God would send them out? Who he gave the 10 pounds or the 10 talents to? What was their job? What was their purpose? Hold that, get Jeremiah 44 now. Jeremiah 44, same book, 44 and verse 4. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 44, verse 4. Mm -hmm. How be it I sent unto you all my servants, the prophets. The most I was sending all the servants, the prophets, come on. Rising early and sending them, saying, What? Oh, do not this abominable thing that I hate. God's prophets, they have a job. Their job is to provoke the children of Israel to righteousness. Provoke the children of Israel to keeping God's laws. Because those are the things that got us in this captivity. Names did not get us in captivity. Names did not get us into captivity. Hebrew did not get us into captivity. Because you had Hebrew people being loaded onto a ship, planking, urinating and defecating upon one another. Dying and disease right next to one another. Throwing up and coughing right next to another. And they spoke, they, they, they spoke fluent Hebrew. It was amazing. But guess what? The Most High God never considered that. Where's the law that says thou must speak as Hebrew? It's not in the Bible. It's not in the Bible. But the men of the Lord understand that our job is to tell them, do not this abominable thing that I hate, meaning what? Don't go contrary to what is actually written in the Bible. See, that's the difference between 144,000 and men who are average, men who are mediocre. Men who don't understand the vision, they would do what? They will occupy their time in their own endeavors. They will occupy their time in their own intentions and objectives. But the true men of the Lord would do what? Teach the people not to do the things that God hates, like be defiled with women, like be tossed to and fro with different winds of doctrine, like do things that are counterproductive, but you think the kingdom is going to magically appear. It doesn't work that way. It comes through a multitude of business. Whose business? The father's business. Not your own business. Not your camp's business. Not, not uh, strifes of words. But what is going to take to bring forth Christ's kingdom? Teach the people to stop doing the things that God hates. The most High God says, there is no speech, no language where his voice is not heard. Psalms 19, verse 3, for you brothers who are unlearned. That the regularly scheduled program. Let's read that verse again. Jeremiah 44 and verse 4. Uh -huh. How be it, I sent unto you all my servants, the prophets, uh -huh. rising early and sending them, saying, What? Oh, do not this abominable thing that I hate. It says, Oh, do not this abominable thing that I hate. Now go back to Luke now. Let's go back to Luke and read 19 again. Luke chapter 19, verse 11. We stopped at 13, right? Verse 13. Come on. And he called his 10 servants and delivered them 10 pounds and said unto them, mm -hmm. Occupy till I come. He said, Occupy till I come. Come on. But his citizens hated him mm -hmm. and sent a message after him saying, we will, not, we will not have this man to reign over us. They said what? We will not have this man to reign over us. Read on. And it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the kingdom, mm -hmm. then he commanded these servants to be called unto him, to whom he had given the money, that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. So those who do not want to rule over him are those who are slothful, those who are what? Counterproductive. Being counterproductive is a form of laziness and slothfulness and rebellion. So if you are not occupying and bringing forth the Lord's kingdom, guess what you do? Guess what you are? You are a hindrance. You are a hindrance. Christ gave us talents to bring forth the kingdom. So the 144,000, they understand that in order to bring forth Christ's kingdom, it would take a collective effort. Not a crab in a barrel spirit, but it would take a collective error, a collective effort. Because uh, the, the, the true 
uh, elite of this world, they understand that what? We all gonna get the kingdom together. There is no individual kingdom. The kingdom is for what? A nation of people. It's not for, it's, it's not for one man. That selfish crab in the barrel spirit, it has gotten us nowhere, but in captivity, uh, biting and devouring one another. And until we wise up as a people, all brothers are gonna do is bring forth what? Bring forth more confusion, and you don't even know you're being a hindrance. The most of God will not allow a hindrance for too long. Either the most of God gonna move you out of the way one way, or he'll move you out of the way by, by any means necessary. And you don't want the most of God to get involved with you. So the best thing you can do is as a labor of God, bring forth his kingdom or get moved out of the way. Now, give me um give me uh first Corinthians 14. First Corinthians 14. Let's get that. And let's start at verse one. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse one. Mm -hmm. Follow after charity mm -hmm. and desire spiritual gifts. So the Bible says follow after charity. Give me a definition of charity. This is a spirit that's going to be inside those men, those elite men. This spirit is going to be inside of them. Let's read that. Charity. Corinthians 14 and verse 1, we want the definition of charity. Charity mm -hmm. and organ no. Is it an organization? Mm -hmm. Read two. And yeah, read two. What? Two. The voluntary giving of help. Mm -hmm. So it says one one definition is the voluntary giving of help. Meaning what you have a care for your people. Read this one right here. Kindness. kindness and tolerance in judging others. It says kindness and tolerance in judging. That's another definition of charity. So what is it going into? It's going to having a compassionate spirit and a love and a care for your people. Not a hatred for your people. Not an evil eye for your people. This spirit right here is, is in those men who are going to be the elite. Many of you lack that spirit. Therefore, you would not be in the number. Read verse 1 again. Verse 1. Mm. Follow after charity mm. and desire spiritual gifts. Mm. But rather that ye may prophesy. Rather that you what? May prophesy. Mm. But he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto me. So it says desire spiritual gifts. Because remember, the most of God gave those men talents. Our job is to occupy. Use our talents. Teach other men our talents. We trade with them. We give them our talent. We trade and we take their talent. And we all incorporate because we understand that what the kingdom will come through collective effort. Collective effort effort meaning we must all work together that's what those men understand the greatest gift is to prophesy how can you prophesy if you don't study give me second Timothy 2 verse 15 let's get that second Timothy 2 verse 15 the book of second Timothy chapter 2 verse 15 mm -hmm. study to show thyself approved unto God mm -hmm. a workman that needeth not to be ashamed mm -hmm rightly dividing the word of truth it says you must rightly divide the word of truth and what and what else are you supposed to do read on but shun but what but shun but shun shun means to dismiss shun means to disregard but shun what profane and vain babblings shun shun profane and vain babblings read on but they will increase unto more ungodly because all they do is increase unto more ungodliness there's no profit therein don't indulge in it A avoid it like the plague Read 16 again. Verse 16. Mm -hmm. But shun profane, profane and vain babblings, mm -hmm. but they will increase unto more ungodliness. It will only increase to more ungodliness. The person who's bringing forth the profane and vain babblings don't even know he has the devil on him. So don't entertain him. Why? Because that same devil can jump upon you. And those things increase unto more ungodliness. Jump down to verse 24. Verse 24. Mm -hmm. And the servant of the Lord must not, must not strive. It says the servant of the Lord must not strive. Come on. But be gentle. But be what? But be gentle. This is the spirit that's going to be in those elite men. It says, but be gentle. Come on. Unto all men. Read. Apt to teach. Read. Patient. Patient. Come on. In meekness. Mm -hmm. Instructing those that oppose themselves. Our job is to continue to teach and instruct those even though they oppose in themselves. Because I'm not your enemy. you your own enemy. You are opposing yourself. The things that you're doing are counterproductive to your own salvation. And a lot of things that you do, you are doing nothing but bringing judgment upon yourself. There's a judgment for bringing confusion. So it says, my job is to continue to what? Instruct those that oppose themselves. The 144,000, their job is to instruct those that oppose themselves. Even though you may be suicidal spiritually 
My job is to, is to continue to provide the medicine and the solution for you. So read that again. Verse 25. Mm -hmm. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. Read. If God peradventure mm -hmm. will give them repentance mm -hmm. to the acknowledging of the truth. You see that? Because who knows? While you have breath in your lungs, there's hope for you. When the most of God kills you, you're done twice. So from there, let's get Jeremiah 1 and 5. Jeremiah 1 and 5. What? The book of Jeremiah, chapter 1, verse 5. Mm. Before I formed thee in the belly, mm. I knew thee. Huh. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. Mm. And I ordained thee a prophet Come on. unto the nations. Mm. Then said I, I, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, mm. for I am a child. Mm. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child. But thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. Mm -hmm. And whatsoever I command thee. Whatsoever is in this Bible, whatsoever I command thee. Read. Thou shalt speak. Uh -huh. Be not afraid of their faces. Mm -hmm. For I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Read. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. Mm -hmm. See. I have this day set thee over the nations. The most I got said he set us over the nations. Come on. And over the kingdoms. Read. To root out. To root out. Come on. And to pull down. And to pull down. Come on. And to destroy. And to destroy. Come on. And to throw down. Read. And and to and to throw down. Mm -hmm. To build. Read. And to plant. So our job is to what? Destroy the lies that was taught to our people. Destroy the heresies that are being taught to our people. And then what? Build our people up. To plant our people. Establish them what? In God's word. With their nationality, their culture, their heritage, and what? The keeping of God's laws. That is our job. Our job is to teach them God's laws and the faith of Christ. Those two things. From there, give me Jeremiah 28. Jeremiah 28 and verse 8. Because God said he set us over the nations. Jeremiah 28 and verse 8. I'm going to show you uh, the, way, the way the 144,000 move in this world. Let's see, let's see if it's just behind a screen. Let's see if they mighty in typing. But absent on the street. Jeremiah 28 and verse 8. Jeremiah chapter 28, verse 8. Uh -huh. The prophets that have been of before me mm -hmm. and before thee of old mm -hmm. prophesied both against many countries. The Bible says prophets, they prophesy against many countries. You know how you do that? You have to go out there and stand on a block in that country. The, the, the spirit of those elite men, they stand in the belly of the beast and they're not worried about the acid. They stand in the belly of the beast. And prophesy against the country that they're abiding in. Not hide behind a computer. Not have a, a lion as your profile picture. Not sit back and have your head wrapped in the turban. No, 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 no. They show their face. We don't wear masks. We go out there in the same place where we live and sojourn and we do what? We prophesy against the country. That's the spirit of the prophet. They don't sit behind a Facebook. Come on. And and against great kingdoms mm -hmm. of war Read. and of evil mm -hmm. and of pestilence. You see the thing? They speak about war, evil, and pestilence. Read on. Verse 9. That was all I went on that. Yes. So it says, they prophesy a war of peace and of, pe uh, and of pestilence. Give me wisdom of Solomon now. It takes a whole different spirit. It's a whole different spirit. Wisdom of Solomon 1. Solomon verse. Uh, wisdom of Solomon 1. No, 5 and 1. The book of wisdom of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 1. Come on. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness mm -hmm. before the face of such as have afflicted him mm -hmm. and made no account of his labor. So it says the righteous man, he's going to stand in great boldness before the face of those that afflicted them. Not before the screen of those that afflicted him. Not in front of the television set of those that afflicted him. But he's going to stand face to face with those that afflicted him. Come on. Verse 2. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear. And shall be these, these nations are not troubled by you brothers on Facebook. It says, when they see you face to face, they shall be troubled. When they see you face to face, they shall be troubled. When they see you face to face, a thousand men, they shall be troubled. Media blackout. Why? Because they are troubled. They are not troubled by any Negro that's on Facebook. They are not troubled. Come on. With terrible fear. Mm -hmm. And shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation. They're going to be amazed at those who they try to destroy are now on the streets mocking them. And ushering in the Lord's kingdom. They're gonna be amazed by that thing and, and, and estranged with terrible fear. Come on. So far beyond all that they looked for. Read. And they repented and groaning for anguish of spirit mm. shall say within themselves. It shall say what? 
this was he who we had sometimes in de derision mm -hmm. and a proverb of reproach. Mm -hmm. We fools accounted his life madness mm -hmm. and his end to be without honor. You see that thing? So those elite men are going to do what? They're going to stand in the midst of all adversity. They're not going to be moved or shaken because we are at war. And the war, is, the war is not waged because we speak Hebrew, because Hebrew is a dead language. That's not why the war is on. The war is being waged. Why and for what purpose? Let's get related to 12 and 7. Because the Most High God, he, did, he just moved and made the chess piece, and the whole world is watching. There's a media blackout, but the Most High God says, oh, no, don't worry about it. I control the true media. I control what men see. Revelation 12 and verse 7. Revelation chapter 12, verse 7. Mm -hmm. And there was war in heaven. Mm -hmm. Michael and his angels. I'm sorry. Verse 17. Huh? And the dragon was wroth with the woman. The dragon was wroth with the woman. The heathen nations, the top of the nations, eat them. It says they are what? Wroth with the woman. They are wroth with the woman. Who what? The nation of Israel. Come on. And to make, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Come on. Which keep the commandments of God. No, which 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 teach Hebrew. Which keep the commandments of God. No, those that speak Hebrew. Which keep the commandments of God. Those that say the name. Which keep. The commandments of God. Hmm. Read on. And have the testimony of Jesus Christ. The war is not is not with you brothers who are talking about Hebrew. You, you. back they say it's back but if, if y'all can see and hear me type why okay well I, I continue to teach but my screen is my screen is telling me that is Facebook is trying to reconnect and due to poor wireless connection your video has been paused so but if y'all can see and hear me clearly all praise to the most high read that verse again Revelation chapter 12, verse 17. Um, 17, 12. No, you're right, 12, 17. Go ahead. And the dragon was wroth with the woman uh -huh. and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, mm -hmm. which keep the commandments of God uh -huh. and have the testimony of Jesus. So the war is, is against those of us who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus the Christ. That's who the war is with. The war is not with anybody else. For example, give me um, verse 15. Number the verse 15. Verse 15. Mm -hmm. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood what is, after the what is the water of a flood? The water is what the different doctrines. The water is what the media. He used those things to what? As a, as a weapon against our people. He used the media to what? To omit things that he don't want to show to our people. Read on. As a flood mm -hmm. after the woman, mm -hmm. that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. You see that? But those men right here who the war is against. Will not be moved or shaken by any means. They will not be moved or shaken. Give me um Revelation 12. Propaganda won't actually give me Corinthians first, Corinthians 15. Propaganda will not shake these men. 
The media will not shake these men. Give me Corinthians 15. Death will not shake these men. Corinthians 15. Start at verse 55. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 55. Mm -hmm. O death, where is thy sting? It says what? O death, where is thy sting? It says, O death, where is thy sting? Read. O grave. Where is thy victory? Why? Because death has no sting when you lived your life keeping God's laws and the faith of his son, Jesus Christ. Death has no sting when you spend your time addicted to the work, ushering in the Lord's kingdom. Why? Because if we lose this life, the most of God going to restore it to us. So read that verse again. O death, where is thy sting? This is the mind of the 144,000. Death has no sting over us. From now, give me um, Revelation 12. Death has no sting when you keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. Uh, give me um, Revelation 12 and verse 11. The book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 11. Mm -hmm. and, that, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb mm -hmm. and by the word of their testimony. Mm -hmm. And they love not their lives unto the death. It says they love not their lives unto the death. So th those men do not love their lives. They do not love their lives. What? They love what? The Most High God and His Son, and they love their nation more than anything. They will not put anything before that. They will not jeopardize anything, but they will jeopardize their own lives for the coming forth of the Lord's kingdom. And the salvation of our people that's the difference between uh those men who are real men and you males you boys because a lot of you are born males but it takes a special spirit to be a man those who believe in his son and keep the commandments of god those are the real men those are the leaders a lot of y'all y'all just males y'all do nothing to bring forth christ's kingdom crabs in a barrel you less than a male you like a, a a wild animal outside of your habitat and what your, your your survival instincts have have skewed your judgment. Last scripture, give me Luke 14 and 25. So they love not their lives. Some of you love the American habitat. Because that's all it is. It's a big habitat for you. Read that. Luke 14, 25. Luke chapter 14, verse 25. Mm -hmm. And there went great multitudes with him, and he turned and said unto them. Mm -hmm. If any man come to me and hate not his father mm -hmm. and mother mm -hmm. and wife mm -hmm. and children mm -hmm. and brethren mm -hmm. and sisters, mm -hmm. yea, and his own life, mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. he cannot be my disciple. Those men will not put anything above or before the mission. It says you must do what? You must hate your father. Does that mean that you have to hate your father? No, that's not what it means. It just means that if, if your father is trying to get you to move in a way that's contrary with the ushering of the Lord's kingdom, your father must be moved out of the way. It says his mother, same thing. She cannot compromise the mission. It says his wife, children, brethren. Nobody is in a position. Nobody has the authority to compromise the mission and sway your judgment, sway your focus. The elite would not be swayed by anybody. Read on. Verse 27. Mm -hmm. And whosoever doeth not bear his cross mm -hmm. and come after me. Read cannot be my disciple you must what bear your cross why because we all have our own internal struggles we have three trials we must face our personal trials our murder trials and congregation trials without those trials you may be a bastard so we gonna end the israel um i pray i pray i was able to glean something from the class uh lord's will um lord's will next next class i could uh deal with some questions that actually pertain to the class and actually pertain to our salvation um, but got to go, got to take care of business. Um, most time, Christ bless you all. Shalom.
Cause I've been walking around saying that I'm a black man I ain't saying that no more, it's our man This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ Please subscribe to our YouTube channels Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.